Hello, hello, hello guys, and welcome back to Joe's Ventures. And today, we're going to be doing another episode of our Jurassic World Evolution Accurate Dinosaur Mod Spotlights. So we're going to be taking a look at a bunch of different mods that people have been making and compare them to their real-life counterparts, plus some new animals, and I really enjoy this. And yeah, we're not going to be getting too many more of these, unfortunately, with the release of Jurassic World Evolution 2. Then it'll be... Jurassic World Evolution 2 Accurate Dinosaur Mod Spotlights, but I've still got a few and there's still people making mods, so I've collected a bunch and we're going to do a few more of these before the release of Jurassic World Evolution 2, but let's get stuck into this one. So we're going to be starting with a really, really cool dinosaur here. We are getting, this is by uh, Neltoraptor and Christian474, I believe that's their proper names, but we have got the Camptosaurus. Yep, look at that. Look at this wonderful guy. Wait till he stopped running to get a good look. So this is Camptosaurus. It's... Okay, here we are. It's Camptosaurus. So, if you don't know about Camptosaurus, it's a really cool dinosaur. So... These guys are a genus of plant-eating ornithischian dinosaurs, so the bird hip dinosaurs, it includes animals like Iguanodon and Triceratops. They are from the late Jurassic period of the Western uh, North America. And uh, their name means flexible lizard in uh, Greek, or bent, so, or bent lizard. So that's kind of the two translations. So these guys are from the very, very well-known and famous formation, the Morrison Formation. So that's where you get a lot of these animals like Stegosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Allosaurus, Torbosaurus, animals like that. So they're really kind of the small herbivore. Not even though they're not really small, they're pretty big animals. Some of the estimates these guys get to about 6 meters long and 785 to 874 kilograms. So a little load under a ton. So they're still very big animals, but just small when you've got animals that are like 30, 40, 50 tons plus. But they're really, really wonderful animals. So... These guys have like these really cool, relatively broad, uh, heavy built with like robust forelimbs and uh, broad feet, and they still have these four toes. And uh, the largest of these fragments also include an individual that was about 7.9 meters long and about 6 foot 6 or 2 meters at the shoulder. So these guys are really important in terms of evolution because these guys kind of are the earliest relatives of animals that lead into Hadrosaurus forms and Iguanodontids. So they're a very, very early animal and tell us a lot about that evolution. And a little bit of their paleobiology, they just kind of lived in their own uh, niche. They're kind of like a mid-level herbivore and they were probably food for animals like Ceratosaurus and Allosaurus, animals like that, but still a really cool animal. And some of the evidence suggests that these guys were at running speeds of like two and a half kilometers per hour or about 15... Uh, miles and we actually do have a really cool fossilized embryo of a animal that is believed to be Camptosaurus. It's about nine uh, inches long. It's a little embryo so it's very cute. And watch this guy have a nice feed. Wonderful animal. You can see that I really like the colors that they did on this guy. I like the, uh, the what do you call it? The, it'd be the front. It's a really nice front here. You see the patterns. And a bit of a retexture as well, so it looks a bit smoother. Really interesting animal. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Ooh, no, is it? Ooh, time to run away. So we'll let you go get your drink, and then we'll move on to the next animal. So this one's not a dinosaur, but it's really, really interesting. This was by um, by Oxylus, or I believe that's pronounce it, and Max Lee. With two Y's, I think. I try to credit you guys as best I can, but I can't sometimes get names right. <laughs> but we have got Diplocalus. So let's see this guy go. So now, Diplocalus is a weird guy, so 
These are Tibna, Spondyl, Amphibians. So they were an extinct group of really, really big and wacky amphibians. So these guys lived in the late Carboniferous to the Permian. So that was about 300 to 250 million years ago, somewhere around there. So that's kind of their range. And they're from North America and Africa. And they are by far probably one of the largest and best known. And they're really distinctive because as you can see here, let's see, let's, let's pause you here. You can see here, they've got this really, really distinct skull here. See, it's almost like a boomerang. So they can get pretty large too. They've got like a real salamander-like body. They can get up to about a meter long uh, in length. And these really distinctive features, as you see, these big horns that they've got. So it really gives them a unique look to them. And there's a bunch of different species that have been described. I'm not sure about the validity of them, but they're still really, really cool. So a lot of these um, hypotheses, this has included one of the hypotheses about the um, sort of the shape and why the shape of this uh, skull came to be. So a lot of these would think they could be for lift because they also suggest that um, they could be you know, like a skater or a stingray, they kind of use this flap of skin that hanged off their body to kind of generate lift or help conceal their, like, kind of uh, shape in the water, but that is no evidence of that. We don't really have soft tissue preserved for this animal. But then a lot of people also think that this could have been used for lift, so it kind of helped them in the water, so if they wanted to get up easier, they could just like kind of paddle ahead and just use it to generate lift, kind of like the pectoral fins and sharks, because sharks technically sink in the water, so they kind of use their pectoral fins to help generate lift so they can stay in the water column and not just sink to the bottom. And they have a really interesting paleobiology as well, so the hydrodynamics of these guys is really really interesting with that so and there were shows that they were kind of adapted to slower streams or where intermittent lift was primatized so they kind of just probably stuck around at the bottom or hang out in really slow flowing rivers and believe it or not there's been a trio of juveniles found in the burrow with eight juvenile Europs, which was another large amphibian that they lived with and they were found to be partially eaten by the sail-backed dimetrodon so that shows that it kind of what they lived with. And it was likely for these, the Mitchtron kind of went down into a dried up riverbed and kind of dug up these animals. Because if you look at animals like lungfish and amphibians like that, when often things dry out, they will hide in a cocoon and then dig in the soil and stay moist and hibernate. So it's possible this Dimetrodon could have went through a drought, dug through and found a bunch of food. So that's really, really cool. So one of the three were actually killed with the bites of the head as well, and taking the portions of the brain and skull and a fatal injury that obviously this animal could not uh, survive from. But I just think that's really, really cool. So we can see this wonderful animal. So let's, let's keep playing. So this was done originally as a Zoo Tycoon mod <laughs> and by um, Oxalis. He does like a lot of old Zoo Tycoon mods and some of them are really, really nice. And this one I think translated pretty well into Jurassic World Evolution. I like the skin flaps, I think it really gives it a unique profile. It's really wonderful. Yeah. Ooh. Look, at his, look at that face, how can you not get uh, intrigued by that boomerang face? A wonderful animal. Everything in the Cambr uh, Carboniferous was weird. He's gonna go in the water. That's where he, that's his home. Just look at him skulking down to the bottom. So speaking of big weird carboniferous animals, we got another animal. So this was done by Mango. We have got Arthropleura. Let's see this guy go. Is he going to go for a feed or is he going to go for a drink? Looks like he's going for a drink. I'm going to get a good video picture of this guy. Let's explain this guy. So, Arthropleura was a genus of centipedes, well, ancient centipedes, millipedes, kind of like arthropods. They are from the lower Carboniferous and uh, to the lower Permian. So, they range from 345 to 295 million years ago. Let's see, he stopped there. Let's drink him. So he's getting himself up. So they are a genus. So there's a lot of different species, and there's a bunch of ranging sizes. So the smallest one got to about 30, about a foot long. 
but the largest one, Arthur Pleura Amanta, was two and a half meters long, or like eight to nine feet long. So they were taller than a person if you laid them down, and that's a millipede. So it's really, really weird. And a lot of the common explanations and to why these guys got so big is that in the lower Carboniferous, the oxygen content of the air was about 15% more than it is now. So right now it's about like 25. Back in their time, it was 35%. So this uh, more oxygen in the atmosphere allowed to pretty much supercharge these insects. But another really big thing as well is that there were no other large land animals uh, that were as well adapted to living on land as the uh, invertebrates of the time. So it's very possible that these guys were kind of like the first mega herbivores or mega carnivores, include animals like mega neuro and things like that. So these guys would have been the biggest land animals and kind of taking the role as kind of animals like uh, uh, the dinosaurs would have took and a lot of those early Permian synapsids before them and especially the mammals like uh, bison and uh, big herbivores would have taken today. So this is kind of like the precursor. So I think that's really, really cool. So. You can see they have these like flattened bodies with about like 30 different segments depending on the species. This one's probably a bit exaggerated just because it's a weird bod, but I think that's really, really cool. And it was actually really interesting that a lot of people thought these guys were like giant active predators, but it turns out they were herbivorous, much more like modern millipedes. So these guys have been found with like pollen in their mouths and their anatomy suggests that they were very much large herbivores. So I think that's really, really cool. So Sadly, these guys would have become extinct around the Ed Carboniferous period, and they were the moist climate would have been um, they begun drying out and reducing the rainforest that they live in. So sadly, that drew them to extinction as the climate cooled. Okay, we'll have a look at that. So yeah, really wonderful animal. Very, very cool. And we'll put this back on. So really, really cool. And these animals would have been separated by like, millions of years. Wonderful animals. So now we're going to move on to the next one. So this one's going to be a bit of a funny one, but I think that's really, really funny. Someone made, this was by uh, Jabursa, I believe how to pronounce it. We have got a chinchilla gigas. <laughs> so how is this not funny? So you can see this is like a, obviously a made up species of chinchilla. Chinchilla's never got this big and never, never really got this big. So, and, so what is a chinchilla? So, chinchilla is a group of two species. There's the long-tailed and the short-tailed chinchilla. So they're compuscular rodents. That means they only come out in the uh, middle of the day, uh, early afternoon or... Or late, or early morning, early morning to late afternoon. Oh, he hops on that, isn't that cute? So you can watch him there. So these guys are slightly larger than like ground squirrels that are native to, and are native to the Andes Mountains of South America. And they live in colonies called herds that are high elevations at about 4,270 meters or 14,000 feet. And historically, Chinchillas lived in areas like Bolivia, Peru, Argentina, and Chile, but to today the colonies are only really known from Chile since a lot of them were hunted for their fur, since they have pretty much one of the densest furs out of any animal. So they also refer to as the chinchilla rat, so that's another common name for them. So they have the densest fur of all mammals that live on land, and only the sea otter, which lives in the water, has a denser coat. Than these guys so they were named after the chinchilla uh chinchilla people of the andes who once wore its death's fur as like clothing and such and by the end of the 19th century sadly they became quite rare because of their hunting for this ultra soft fur but most chinchillas uh used in the fur industry are farm raised at least so now they're not hurting wild populations even though hopefully we can help the wild populations so yeah, and there are domestic chinchillas that are descended from the C. lejuna, which I believe is the uh, long-tailed chinchilla. And they're sometimes kept as pets and sometimes considered as like a pocket pet. So they're not very huge. They, there is some important care things to take care of them with, but I'm not going to go into like a care guide for a giant chinchilla because I don't think you're ever going to get a giant chinchilla. Nothing like this. But yeah, I think that's a really wonderful mod and 
we can let him walk away and while we carry on to the next one. So doesn't that work out perfectly? So next up, this one was by um, Jasbergia and Maxley. We have got, last but not least in this group, we got Haptogopteryx. So we got a pterosaur. So where's he going? He's going for a drink. So Hepsicopterus was a, a starkid pterosaur, so related to animals like Quetzalcoatlus and animals like that. So these guys were found in the late Maastrichtian, so the very, very last of the Cretaceous. So let's just uh, have that paused. We kind of just missed out, but look at that wonderful guy. <laughs> so Hepsicopterus was found in the late Maastrichtian, so the very, very last uh, period of the Cretaceous before the KTP extinction in Transylvania and Romania and lived on the island of Hatzig, which at the time of the late Cretaceous was an island filled with all sorts of really cool dinosaurs and dwarf dinosaurs. So things like Maguarisaurus and Zamoxis and things like that, which I think I've showed Zamoxis in a couple episodes from this guy. So I think that's really, really cool. Let's, let's put it on slow so we can watch him eat. So these guys aren't really known for too much. They're known from a skull and humerus and neck vertebrae and things like that. But what's really interesting is that these guys are believed to be one of the largest of the Starkid pterosaurs and the largest of all pterosaurs, ranging from about 10 to 12 meter wingspan. So that would put in the same animals like uh, Quetzalcoatlus and Apsenbergia and things like that. So, but, but what makes them extra weird compared to these other pterosaurs is that, let's just let them go and have a drink is that these guys had a particularly wide skull and a short neck so that tells us a little bit about their ecology because these guys would kind of been like the top predators of the uh, island ecosystem so it's very possible that these guys would have been eating smaller dinosaurs that up to like 70 kilos in weight so small uh, titanosaurs uh, and other small dinosaurs would have been food for these guys and so these so they adapted to that with having these really big thick skulls they were able to take a lot of forces and the heavily muscled neck is a meter and a half long it was much shorter than animals like Quetzalcoatlus and other Astarkids so it was basically particularly adapted to hunt animals like that so I think that's really really cool and he's gonna eat fish that's a little weird but interesting I'll we'll just I kind of wish we had a fast forward option but I think we're getting that in JV2 so that works so you can see that's they would be eating, not, they wouldn't be eating like that, that's just a rig, but I think that's a really cool pterosaur to show off, and you can see, the only thing I could really critique on this is kind of, there's no pycnofibers, which is almost like homologous or similar structures to feathers, they would have been covering most pterosaurs, so they would have been fluffy, but this one's much more scaly, but I really love the pattern on this guy, really did a good job, 10 out of 10. So let's move on to the next animal, we've got Another one done by good old Wheat. So who doesn't love Wheat? This one's a really nice one that he made. We have got Diabloceratops Ketoni. So just before I start talking about the animal itself, I just have to say, I love this coloration. It's based pretty much like off Australian water dragons or Eastern water dragons. You can see that really nice red and green contrast. I love it. I just need to say that before I get into the animal. So what is Diabloceratops? So Diabloceratops is a genus of Ceratopsians. So it's a centrosaurine, so related animals like Centrosaurus. And they were estimated to live around Utah in the late uh, Cretaceous, about 79.9 million years ago. Where is he going? Where'd he go? I thought he was coming over here. Oh, there he is. What are you doing? You're going to run to the water. Okay, okay, that makes sense. At least he wants to avoid you. Okay, we'll watch you have a drink. 
look at this wonderful animal so yeah these guys were pretty big animals they were quadrupedal herbivores they got to about 5.5 meters long or 18 feet and at the time of discovery it was the oldest known um ceratopsid and the first known centrosaurian from latitudes south of the united states and mexico and its name diablo ceratops means devil horn face coming from the spanish word for devil diablo and the greek horn face ceratops so they're just like triceratops so I think these guys are really cool animals. They were very, very poorly built, and you can see that you see the frill there. There's really distinct horns that splay out. That kind of gives us the name Diabloceratops. So I think that really looks wonderful. Let's, let's stop it there, and you can see how wonderful it looks. So these guys would have been related to animals like Inosaurus and Styracosaurus, and one of the first of the centrosaurian dinosaurs, so it's very primitive. And these guys would have lived in the Washwep formation, that would have lived around the uh, near the Western Ontario Seaway, so there would have been like these kind of flood plains and nice forested habitats next to the coastal areas that these guys would have been living in. And these guys also shared a bunch of uh, with a bunch of different animals. They lived with animals like uh, they were more primitive than the animals in the Kaparowitz Formation. So this was found with animals like uh, Erectivus gravi, so types of uh, hadrosaurs. Also, Lythronax was a an early Tyrannosaur was a really important apex predator in this ecosystem. And it was also found with animals like bowfin, sharks, rays, uh, freshwater fish, turtles, lungfish, all sorts of uh, prehistoric mammals, including multituberculates and marsupials. And there were other ornithischian and theropod dinosaurs, along with lots of de dens and stuff, and a really interesting ecology that we have from the Wabit formation. And I just think this is such a great... Um, animal and i really liked the best thing he's got he got the feet right look he got the feet right look at the feet so i'm gonna go over the feet again because i love going over the feet so if you look at dinosaur feet you can see that in the front digits really only the first three digits have claws on them and these last two would have been kind of just like bony nubs and you can see they kind of got the right feet going so wheat you always do a good job and i love that texture wheat you just blow me away every time really like this color yeah wonderful wonderful animal wonderful 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 so now we're going to move on to some carnivores so this one was done by hyper sgt we have got malagasysaurus or mashakasaurus i hate to pronounce it I want to follow this guy. Hopefully, you stop for a drink because that's what I want you to do. Stop for a drink. Stop for a feed. I don't care. Let me stop. So, we can get a really, really cool look at this guy and see what makes him distinct because he's a really weird dinosaur and I've wanted to cover this guy for a while. So, this is Magasisaurus, if you pronounce it. And you can see here, so this is a small theropod dinosaur from Madagascar. And its name means in Malagasy, Masiaka, I believe how you pronounce it, means vicious. So the genus name is the Vicious Lizard. I love it. So this was named after the musician Mark Kofner, whose music inspired the expedition crew that found it, who was found by Doc Scott D. Sampson and a bunch of other, uh, Matthew Caro and Catherine A. Foster. And... What makes this guy really distinct from other theropods is that the front teeth of this guy projected forward instead of straight down. So you see most theropods have teeth that just go straight down. These guys have like a teeth that stick out like that, and I think it's really interesting. So this is believed to be because these guys were probably specializing in animals like fish and small prey that may have been slippery. And these guys also show it was much uh, bipedal and much shorter forelim forelimbs and hindlimbs. And had an estimated body length of about two meters long. So this guy also lived in a really weird time. So M Masakasaurus lived about 70 million years ago. So this was when uh, Madagascar had been separated from Gondwana. So it was with India. It was Gondwan land and it split from India. So it kind of had had its own time to develop its own really weird species of dinosaurs. So it lived with dinosaurs like the Majungasaurus, uh, Rapetosaurus, and Rahanavis. 
and was a grim- member of the group Noasauridae. So these guys were small ceratosaurs, so not they were kind of related to animals like Elaphosaurus, but more distantly related to animals like uh, Ceratosaurus. So yeah, the Ceratosaurus, so they would have been distantly related. And these guys were primarily found in South America and Africa, but these guys kind of did their own thing in the Cretaceous, and I think they're just really, really cool. So it's a really cool animal that we get to cover. So let's get this guy going, have a look at him. I really like this blue stripe. I'm not usually a fan of blue, but I think this blue makes it fit well. And I just think it's a really unique dinosaur in general, so how can you not get excited about weird dinosaurs? Weird dinosaurs are good dinosaurs. I'll watch him have a drink, and then we'll go have a look at the next animal. Which was also done by Wheat, of course. Wheat is always popping out these models. We have got Tetraphonius by Wheat. I gotta say that again, Wheat, Wheat, Wheat. <laughs> oh. oh, that's a bug that's happened a couple times. <laughs> Watch that. Ooh. There we are. So there's a weird bug for you guys. So let's wait to see where he goes. So Tetraphonius was a Tyrannosaurid dinosaur. So are related to animals, of course, like Tyrannosaurus rex. They're from the late Carpathian period. So about uh, about 77 to 76 million years ago. I think he's going to go for uh, food. So we'll just watch him and then pause it so we can get him in a nice light. So, look at that wonderful, really nice model. I'm itchy, leave me alone. <laughs> so here we are, boom, boom. So there's a good example of what he looks like. Wonderful, wonderful. So, these guys were found in Utah as well, and known as the single species uh, Tetraphonius cunari. So these guys are specifically named after Philip J. Curry. So he's a very famous Tyrannosaurid researcher. It's really nice he got a dinosaur named after him. These guys were found in the Kaparawit Formation of the southern Utah. And as I mentioned, between 76 and 74 million years ago, these guys lived in. And these guys also were decently sized. The estimates uh, were about 6 meters long, or about 20 feet, and 667 kilos in weight with other estimates being between 64 and 1.5 tons, or higher estimates 8 meters and 2.5 tons. So they were a little bit shorter than animals like Albertosaurus, and have a deeper antorbital fenestra and things like that, and deeper skull in general, and they may have been have an increased bite force uh, in Tetraphonius compared to animals like Albertosaurus. So these are a little bit later than animals like Albertosaurus. It's kind of on the line to go into things like... Uh, the two medicine Tyrannosaurid or the Spedosaurus Horneri, and then Brigma Fisetter and Lythronax was kind of on the way for this guy. And there is actually evidence of this social behavior. So what's really, really cool is there was a uh, 2021, there was a bone bed that was attributed to a social pack. So there were eight individuals ranging from four to 22 years old that suggest the mass mortality that could have been caused by flooding or least likely by cyberbacterial toxicosis, fire or drought. And the most likely, the uh, the thing is, is that we were T-Rex being social, that's weird, but it's, we're seeing more and more evidence that these of mass dying sites of not just Tetraphonius, of animals like Despedosaurus and Albertosaurus, it's very likely that Tyrannosaurids may have been social to some extent. So that's some really cool science that is going into it. So... As I mentioned, these guys lived in the uh, Kaparowitz Formation and were found in Laramidia, so the western side of the U.S. and on the west on the side of the eastern shores of the Western Ontario Seaway. And it was uh, Appalachia was east, and these guys were to the west. And these guys would have lived in habitats with like peat fogs and ponds and things like that. And these guys lived with a bunch of really cool animals like Ornithomimus, Parasaurolophus, uh, Gyptosaurus, Eutoceratops, the Pseudoceratops, and Cosmoceratops, and a bunch of other cool um, ornitho, uh, Ornoraptors, and another bunch of like um, cool smaller animals such as turtles, uh, early mammals, salamanders, frogs, uh, marsupials, things like that. So a bunch of really, really cool animals with this guy. I just have to say I love this model, and I love the lips. It just looks like a real animal. 
I love it a lot. And I love the red eyes as well. I think that gives it an accurate but really unique design. Wait, you blow it out of the park again. And last, but not certainly not least. So this uh, mod it was done originally for Zoo Tycoon, but has been ported to Jurassic World Evolution, of course. So we have got by LGCFM and Yulakora, I believe how you pronounce it. We have got Smilodon. This is particularly well done, I think, for what it is. So, Smilodon was a genus of Macarodontid cats, so saber-toothed cats, and one of the most famous prehistoric mammals. So, these guys lived in the Americas from the Pleistocene, so from two and a half million years ago to up until the end of it, about 10,000 years ago. And their name means... Uh, uh, generic name means like two-edged knives or tooth, so basically scalpel or teeth, saber tooth. Let's see if we can get this guy running. Cool. Yeah. So this is a very interesting genus. There's about two, uh, three different species. The oldest and smaller species is uh, Smilodon gracilis, which is probably the ancestor to the two different species. And then they split into two very different species as uh, time goes on. So the North American species was kind of the mid-sized one. So that lived with animals like uh, Colombian mammoths and uh, American lions. And so there was a lot more competition. So these guys were smaller and restricted to different habitats. These are the ones that you find in the La Brea Tar Pits. And they did get pretty good though. So they got to sizes about 160 to 280 kilograms and about 100 centimeters. So that was their size. Uh, Gracilis was about 55 to 100 kilos in weight. And the largest species, which was the, also the latest, that lived in South America was Smilodon populata, which was very, very large. These guys got like 280 or, uh, yeah, 220 to 436 kilos and was about 120 centimeters in height and was basically one of the largest cats uh, to live. Basically one of them. And... In um, North America, these guys la hunted large animals such as bison and camels. And in South America, they would have killed like a lot of the weird South American animals like Toxodon and Macrokenia. So a bunch of really, really weird and cool animals. And they did this by, they were very, very strong. And they used their canine teeth. So what they do is they pounce an animal, use their very strong forelimbs to pin the animal down. And then they would take a very quick and strong bite of the throat. Where they use their sabers to come out and then just rip out or puncture the windpipe and the jugular veins to try and just kill it as quickly as possible so it doesn't resist and this made it very specialized to killing large animals and the issue was is this was all fine during the uh, Pleistocene where there's lots of big animals around but sadly what happened is at the end of the ice age a lot of these big animals were going extinct for a bunch of multitude of different reasons that are hotly debated in the paleological community but sadly these guys could not adapt to the smaller prey that was more common during the time and sadly uh came extinct so yeah and i really like this pattern that they gave the smile of them it's a really nice pattern is uh this is probably i would like to imagine this is fatalis because fatalis seems to be more adapted to close habitats than popular tar but i still think that's a wonderful design and a wonderful animal so i believe this would be a good place to end the video a really wonderful mod Congrats to everyone who made the mods and did a good job. You all did a good job here. So this is a really, really cool animal and I just love the smile it on. Fits surprisingly well for the game. But yeah, I think this is a good place to end. So, yeah. So I really, really, really hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys like and subscribe. Always remember to hit that little bell icon to get notified where I upload anything. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy this video. Hope you guys like and subscribe and bye-bye.